Hi, Chris Good here, and this is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to try to describe some of the mechanisms of the drugs that we've been talking about in Psych 2050, Introduction to Drugs and Behavior. Now, two words of warning before we get started. Uh, the first is, for all these videos, I'm going to draw a representative synapse. And you got to understand that we have more than one synapse. In fact, there are hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of billions of these synapses. So tens of thousands of synapses per neuron on each of your 80 billion or so neurons. And we're drawing one representative synapse because when drugs are ingested into the body, when they travel through the bloodstream, Drug molecules go everywhere. They go in between all of the different neurons. Those drugs are only going to have an action when they get to a place where they have something to stick to. And in these videos, I'm going to show you the things that the drug molecules stick to when they have that opportunity at every one of thousands of billions of synapses throughout the central nervous system. That's the first warning. The other warning is that drug actions are complicated and drugs have multiple effects. We're not going to cover all of the mechanisms of every drug. We're going to focus on the mechanisms that have received the most attention. So for most of these synapses, I'm going to be drawing um, you know, a presynaptic neuron that's going to send a signal and a postsynaptic density, postsynaptic neuron down here, that's going to receive the signal. And that signal is sent in the form of neurotransmitter molecules that are released from vesicles, right? So we can draw little neurotransmitter molecules like this that are packaged into vesicles. And when that action potential comes down the axon, the vesicles fuse their membrane with the presynaptic membrane and they spill their contents into the synapse, the synaptic gap, the space between these two neurons. Now postsynaptically, there are usually receptors for those neurotransmitter molecules. And they work just like a lock and the transmitter is a key. They fit, the keys fit into the locks, right? And when that happens, well, different things happen depending on the type of receptor that's expressed. If uh, it's an excitatory transmitter that's blending, sorry, binding to its receptor, then we might have a positively charged ion that comes through the channel that opens when an excitatory neurotransmitter binds to its receptor. Um, there's different types of receptors though, and transmitters have multiple different types of receptors. So what happens postsynaptically depends on the neurotransmitter and the receptor that's expressed postsynaptically. If this uh, transmitter is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, then when it binds to its receptor, right, then you might pass negatively charged ions into the cell postsynaptically, driving down the voltage and bringing it further away from an action potential. All right, so that's sort of how transmitters and their receptors work. Let's take a look at the mechanisms of two different stimulant drugs that we discussed in class, cocaine and, and the amphetamines including methamphetamine. All right, presynaptically, most synapses have a molecule whose job it is to clear the synapse of transmitter. Its job is part of this neuron's recycling program, right, to grab transmitter that's in the synapse and take it back up into the neuron that released it with the idea of repackaging it into vesicles, right, as part of this neuron's recycling program. So that transmitter that was released gets taken back up into the neuron that released it as a process called reuptake, right? And this protein that's doing the heavy lifting of reuptake 
transports transmitter back into the cell that released it, so we call it a transporter. And in the case of the stimulants, the transporter that we're referring to is the dopamine transporter. Now, when you ingest a stimulant like cocaine, it goes everywhere in the body and in between all of your synapses all over your central nervous system and it doesn't do anything unless it finds something to stick to. What cocaine likes to stick to is the dopamine transporter. It sticks to it and it prevents it from doing its job. So if dopamine transporter is not taking dopamine back up into the neuron that released it, then you end up with an excess of dopamine in the synapse for a longer period of time, meaning that this dopamine is going to be interacting with its receptors more often and for a longer period of time than it would have if cocaine weren't in the synapse. So cocaine we can describe as a dopamine receptor agonist because it more receptors get activated for a longer period of time. And uh, we can also describe cocaine as a dopamine uh, transporter inhibitor. So it blocks the dopamine transporter. There's another transporter for dopamine that works inside the cell, and its job is to aid in the repackaging of dopamine into vesicles. Amphetamines block this other type of transporter, right? So if we have amphetamine molecule, it actually gets into the cell and blocks inside the cell presynaptically this transporter and the end effect of that is that you have more dopamine that is then encouraged to be released into the synapse. So the end result is the same, more dopamine for a longer period of time, but the mechanisms are slightly different. Cocaine activates, uh, sorry, blocks this one transporter, amphetamine blocks this other transporter inside the cell, but the end result is to increase the amount of dopamine that is in the synapse. This typically has an excitatory effect, so we get stimulation of dopaminergic circuits all over the uh, central nervous system. And again, this isn't the only action of cocaine and amphetamine, but this is the one that we focus on mainly. Uh, in addition to blocking dopamine transporter, cocaine blocks transporters of other related neurotransmitters, but we mainly focus on the dopaminergic circuits. That's it for the mechanism of stimulants. I'll be back with another video shortly.